Hey, I'm Russ, uh, Pilates guy, and due to popular demand from uh, a lot of you guys, I'm going to do a morning mobility session. So it's going to be quite easy going. There's not going to be lots of planks or too much hard work. It's going to be more about getting moving and activating some of those key muscle groups. Uh, groups. So throughout the session, just remember um, to keep that precision of alignment. So when we do our setup at the beginning, you want to keep thinking about keeping that body nice and aligned, neutral spine, uh, which will make sense obviously if you've done Pilates before, or watch a previous video of mine about uh, neutral spine and the, and the principles. Um, for this session, do have either a yoga or Pilates block handy, or you can use a couple of pillows um, as well. Just keep those handy to one side uh, for one of the sideline exercises. So let's get started. As with every Pilates session, we'll get ourselves set up. So. We start off, we want those feet hip distance apart. Um, so you want those second toes roughly in line with the bony bits of the hips. Nice soft knees throughout, so we never want to lock out our knees. And if you've got a natural turnout with the feet, keep your natural turnout. So we're standing quite tall. We're going to do our pelvic tilts, great bit of mobility work. So the hands either side of the hips or front and back with your hand on the lower back there. And we're going to start a pelvic tilt now, just tucking your tailbone under and then sticking your tailbone out. So we're gradually gonna to start to make this movement bigger and bigger. If you get any back pain, the NHS recommend pelvic tilts just like this uh, to help with back pain, improving mobility, stretching through that lower back. You should feel your lower back arching and then flattening or even rounding a little bit as we stick out that tailbone and then tuck the tailbone under. If you're not sure you've got it right, just imagine you've got a bucket of water between your hip bones, you're pouring some water out the front and then you pour in some water out the back. You want to keep the rest of the body nice and still. And if you do struggle to do that, bend your knees a little bit like I'm doing. That will help you to isolate just the pelvis. And it also gives you a bigger stretch through that lower back. This can help to release the sacroiliac joints as well. Um, so I get a bit of a pop and then there's a lot of pressure gone from my lower back. Once we've got a nice big movement here, we'll just slowly so you make it smaller each time. So bit by bit, you just come down to a natural stop somewhere between those two movements. And that should get our back, our spine into neutral. Hip bones should be roughly in line here. It's a few big shoulder rolls now. So you take a nice deep breath in as those shoulders come up. Breathing out as we slide those shoulder blades down. Let's do a few of those, gradually making it a bigger and bigger movement. So you can start to get the elbows involved and then just start to make some really nice, big shoulder circles. Breathing in, breathing out. Nice deep breaths in through the nose, expanding the chest, breathing out all of that air if you can as the arms come down. And then once we've got a nice big movement here, we'll just slowly start to make those movements smaller. Again, each time reducing that range of motion, settling those shoulder blades towards those back pockets. Always taking a nice deep breath in as the shoulders come up out. As we set all those shoulder blades down, we want that good posture across the shoulders here. So we're not rounding forwards, we're up nice and tall. Push the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. Make yourself as tall as you can. Tuck your chin slightly, push it in a little bit. Feel your neck lengthen. Now we're gonna to start to engage our cores. We want to activate the transversus abdominis muscle, which comes all the way around. So we're gonna to start to think about pulling your belly button in towards your spine bit by bit. So I want you to focus on pulling that belly button in bit by bit. Imagine you've got a belt around you of 10 notches. You're gradually going to start to increase that pressure notch by notch, starting at 10% and gradually taking that pressure up bit by bit by bit. Keep breathing as you do that, pulling in that belly button. It should be really hard work at the top end. 100% is really, really hard work. You might shake a little bit because you're engaging those abdominals, but keep engaging those muscles, gradually taking up that pressure until you get to your 100%. When you're at 100%, it's really hard work. Pull your belly button through as hard as you can. Give it a really tight squeeze, pulling that belly button through. You might feel pulling down the sides, in the back, and certainly down the front of those abdominals. Once you're given that a tight squeeze, just relax, let that go. And I want you to bring that back to 30%. That's where you're gonna keep it throughout the session unless we decide to increase it a little bit more. Then we're gonna work on those pelvic floor muscles. We need to use the pelvic floor as part of the core and help support the spine. So you just wanna to start to engage those muscles. Imagine you're desperate for the toilet and try not to go. You engage those muscles underneath. And when you think about lifting up inside, pulling those muscles up inside, try and keep your quads relaxed, your glutes relaxed, just increasing that pressure. Lift those pelvic floor muscles up whilst keeping 30% in the abdominals, staying nice and tall in your good posture. Keep breathing bringing those muscles up as much as you can. If you need to close your eyes to focus, feel free to do that. Once you've got to that maximum, pull that belly button through as hard as you can again. Give everything a really tight squeeze inside. Really, really tight squeeze. 
and then relax. Now I want you to bring that back to 30% or 40% or more if you like, but we need a minimum of 30% around the core. By core, I mean abdominals, pelvic floor. So we'll take a nice deep breath in. We're gonna breathe out as we slide the fingers down towards the knee to one side, breathing in as you come back to the middle and then breathing out as you go the other way. So I want you to try and keep those hips as still as possible. We don't want to be pushing the hips out to either side. You all want that going on. We want to keep them as still as possible. And we're just coming over to one side, pulling ourselves back up to the middle, and then we're going the other way. So again, that lateral flexion extension through the spine. Really, really important movement for the spine. If you play sports, this is going to help you avoid injuries. And it's a great way to warm up the back. One that most people don't bother doing uh, people don't really warm up their spines properly before sport, especially contact sports. So it's really important movement, lateral flexion extension through the spine. We're keeping that core strong at 40% probably would be better, especially as we start to progress. Now, if you do want to work a bit harder after you've done a few warm up repetitions, we're going to take those fingertips to the temples. So instead of running the finger down the middle of the leg, you're going to keep your elbow in line with the middle of the leg. So we're not leaning forwards or backwards. It's like you're between two panes of glass. You can't lean forwards back and you can't twist around. You want to keep those hips as still as you possibly can, knees staying soft. And we're breathing out as we come over to one side. Pull your belly button in towards the spine as you do, and then breathe in through the nose as you come back. Breathing out, going the other way, pulling that belly button in a little bit more. Breathing in as you come back. You should find that's making you work much harder around the core. Let's do one more each way, keeping that as controlled as possible. Once you've done those, just take your feet a little bit wider. And now we're going to let the hips move. So everything's the same, no twisting, no turning, but we're going to push the hip out to either side. We'll just do a few repetitions, opening up that movement a little bit, breathing out as we come over to one side. Breathing in back to the centre, make sure you're really strong around the middle. This does help strengthen the back as well. If you get back pain, really important movement. Um, but if you've got particularly sore backs, I wouldn't do this version. I'd keep the feet narrow and keep your hips nice and still. And maybe just keep your fingertips running down the side of the leg. The only difference with this version is the feet are slightly wider and we're letting the hips move. Once you've done a couple more of these, let's do two more each way. Always keep those cores strong. We come back to centre, relax your arms down. Do a bit of rotation, lifting the heel as you go from side to side. And we're going to work through our roll downs to bring ourselves to the mat. So what I'd like to do is to stand with your mat out in front of you or uh, wherever you're working. Just have that space out in front of you. We're going to come down to the floor. We're going to work through these roll downs. The things I want you to think about as you work through the roll down is number one, we're not pushing our bums back. Weight stays in the front of the feet and we're rolling down, hanging over our legs. We want those legs as straight as possible with nice soft knees. I want those cores really nice and strong. And we don't, we want to just remember to keep our tailbone slightly tucked under. Just a tiny little tuck as we're working down. Feel the stretch through the back and then through the legs. So nice deep breath in. At the top, we're going to breathe out. And we start to roll down. The chin comes to the chest. Your head totally relaxed. It's just hanging. Then those shoulder blades separate. The arms come forward and the arms just hang. Now we're going to let the weight of the head and the arms just pull us down towards our feet. Keeping your tailbone slightly tucked. Core's strong, and we're peeling our spine over bit by bit. Keep those legs as straight as you can with the knees soft, just working your way down to your maximum stretch, wherever that might be. When you get to your maximum, take a nice deep breath in. Breathing out, think about pushing through the front of the feet as you bring yourself back up. Pulling the belly button in and lifting the pelvic floor all the time. You're restacking, uncurling the spine. When the hands get to the knees, just tuck the tailbone under ever so slightly, and then we're uncurling that spine. Think about rebuilding each vertebrae one after the next on top of each other. At the top, those shoulders roll back, the head comes up with a nice deep breath in. We breathe out and we start to work our way down again. Chin to chest, shoulders round, that weight starts to pull us down towards the floor, the core strong, and that tailbone is slightly tucked, the weight is forward, so we're not pushing those bums back, but peeling ourselves over towards the floor. 
inching down towards our max stretch, wherever that might be. Might get a bit further this time. When you get there, we take a nice deep breath in, we breathe out, and we're rebuilding up through the spine again, pulling in the belly button and all the time, and that pelvic floor is engaged, restacking that spine, that little tailbone tuck when the hands are just sort of past the knees, and we're restacking each vertebrae one at a time, shoulder roll at the top, the head comes up. We're doing that one more time, but we're not gonna come back up. So nice deep breath in, breathing out, you're peeling over. Peeling over towards the floor, stretching through the back. Keep that tailbone a little tucked and that core strong as you work your way towards your maximum stretch. This time when we get to our maximum stretch, we're gonna do three nice deep breaths in through the nose. And with every out breath, we're gonna try and stretch a little bit more. Try and get those hands a bit flatter on the floor or those fingertips a little bit closer to the floor, depending where you've got to. Once we've done those three breaths, we'll bend the knees, take the hands to the mat, and we're gonna bring ourselves down onto our front. So we're gonna come all the way down. You want those hands and arms either side of your chest at a 90 degree angle. Legs are hip distance apart. You want your toes in, relax your heels out, keep those legs nice and relaxed. At the moment, you've got a big arch in that lower back. I want you to tuck your tailbone under. So you're just pushing your pubic bone and hip bones in towards the mat. Just taking a bit of the arch out of that lower back to stop it compressing. Keep those legs relaxed for me, forehead to the mat, pull your belly button in towards your spine, lift your pelvic floor, take a nice deep breath in. As you breathe out, you're just gonna lift the upper body off the mat using your core muscles, your back muscles. Hold for a second, lower back down. Breathing in. We breathe out as we lengthen and lift. We breathe in as we lower. We're not pushing through the arms. We're using the back muscles and the core muscles. Legs are relaxed. Tailbone staying tucked, core staying engaged. We breathe out as we're lifting up. We breathe in as we lower. So we're getting some uh, extension through the spine. This is going to improve mobility. It's going to improve posture and shoulder and neck stability as well. So it's good for shoulder and neck pain. And keeping those shoulder blades sliding back towards those back pockets is going to help with that shoulder stability and that posture of the upper back. It's good for sports performance, also good for back pain, neck pain, and posture. Now, if you want to progress this, we can involve the arms. Now, notice I'm keeping my chin tucked. I'm looking down towards the floor as if I'm reading a book. We need to keep that neck nice and long. We don't want to be looking up like this. We want that chin slightly tucked, neck nice and long. The next level, we let the arms come up with the rest of the body. Legs are still staying relaxed. We're not squeezing our bums here. The core's working harder. If you do have back problems, this might be a bit uncomfortable. So stick to the previous level. We're breathing out as we lift. Hold for a second, in as we lower. So just keep going with that for me. I'll give you another option very shortly to make it a little bit more difficult. So the next option, as we come up, keep that core strong, tailbone slightly tucked, the arms come forwards, the arms come back, and we lower back down. If you're doing the breathing, we breathe out as we lengthen and lift the upper body and continue to breathe out as those arms come forward. Then we breathe in as they come back and in as we lower down. So we're breathing out and in. Keeping those shoulder blades sliding towards those back pockets. We'll just do two more of these at whichever level you've chosen to go with. Remember, it's up to you which levels you go to, how far you push yourself, what range of motion you use. That's all up to you. Once we've done that exercise, we'll just push ourselves up to a four-point kneeling position. We should do a cat stretch. Breathing in or out as you push up into the cat stretch, and then we'll come down into cow, sticking the tailbone out, breathing in or out. And we'll just do a few of those. Really good. It's a nice big pelvic tilt, stretching through the mid-back and that lower back. Just do two or three. And then once we've done that, we're gonna come over onto one side on the mat. So we're gonna stretch out in a nice straight line with the palm facing up, head relaxed down onto your shoulder. We want those shoulders, hips, knees, feet all nicely stacked. We'll bring those knees forward so the feet are directly behind your bum. We're gonna re-straighten that top leg, let it relax down. Now engage those cores, pull the belly button in, lift the pelvic floor. You should get a little gap 
underneath the hip bone there, just a little tiny lift. If you don't have an actual gap, just make sure you're feeling some engagement underneath and that engagement across the waistline. Keep that core strong, leg comes up into a hover. We're just gonna go through a little routine here. So you're gonna point the toe, I want you to lift the leg up a little, flex the foot and lower back down to a hover. Point the toe and lift, flex the foot and lower. Breathing out as you point the toe and lift, flexing the foot, breathing in as you lower. You can keep those fingertips in front to, for stability if you like, but if you can check those hips for me, make sure they're staying stacked on top of each other. You're not rocking forwards, you're not leaning back onto your bum cheek, you're staying nice and stable. The back staying in that neutral that we set up at the beginning, so there's no change in the back and that core is engaged. Head relaxed, no pressure in the neck. We're just going to do three more of these and we'll change the exercise slightly. If you don't want to do the next bit, then I just want you to carry on with these. Really beneficial exercise for strengthening those abductors in the hip. So very good for the hip exercise, core exercise as well. Can help with back pain, definitely helps with sports because we don't focus enough on working around the hips. Those smaller muscles like the glute medius, we're all worried about the glute maximus. So once you've done that, relax that leg down, give that hip a rub and tap if you need to. And once you bring that leg back up in line with the hip, flex the foot forward. Now keep that core strong, make sure your back doesn't change position all the way through this and those hips stay stacked. You might want the fingertips back in front to begin with. We breathe in through the nose to prepare. We breathe out and that leg just comes forward into a kick, gently forward until you feel the stretch. Point the toe, bring that leg back in line with the body. Flex the foot forward, bring that air forward into a kick, feel the stretch down the back of the leg, point the toes, bring that leg back in line with the body. Make sure the hips are staying stacked, no movement there at all. The only thing moving is the leg. Check that lower back. We don't want arching and rounding in that lower back. It's got to stay neutral. We're stretching here, also mobilizing, strengthening through the hips. Flex the foot, bring that leg forward, feel that stretch, just ease into the stretch, point the toes, bring that leg back as you breathe in. Keep that core engaged, make sure you've still got that engagement underneath, that core is still nice and strong as you work through this. Just do two more. Once you've done those two, just relax the leg down. You can let the knee come forward if you want to give that a bit of a rub and a tap. And now we're going to want to grab those cushions or those blocks. So wherever you put them, hopefully not too inconvenient a place, we'll come back onto our sides in exactly the same position that we just were, except for the arms are out in front of us. Head relaxed at the front of the pillow or the block. Arms out in front, like almost like a crocodile, basically. Hands on top of each other. We want those legs bent again. Heels in line with your bum, core strong. We're going to take a nice deep breath in here. As you breathe out, we're going to lift that top arm and gradually take it out over and behind, keeping your legs relaxed, your hips facing forward. Follow your thumb with your eyes, breathing out all the way, breathing in as we come back. So we're opening up that chest. This is a chest opener. We're breathing out to keep that core strong. Those hips always face forward. We don't tip back with the hips or the legs. We're breathing out as that arm comes up and over. Feel that stretch in the back and opening up of the chest and breathe in as you come back. We're just going to do three more like this and then we're going to do a hold. So breathing out. Following that thumb with the head. You should have enough pillow or block behind your head if you started with your head at the front to just let that head rotate back and stay supported. We don't want it falling off the edge of the block as you come back. Breathing out, keep the core strong. Don't let your core relax. We're lifting the pelvic floor and engaging those abdominals. This one is a hold. So when we come back from the one you're doing, this next one we're going to hold over there, breathing for four breaths. So we're breathing out as we come over, ease into that stretch, try and get the hand on the floor or closest to the floor. Nice deep breath in, we breathe out. Try and relax that hand further down, or the arm relaxes further towards the floor. Or you push those fingertips further away without moving the rest of the body. Once you've done four breaths, 
breathe in, breathe out, and you bring yourself back to that start position. So just move those cushions out of the way. I want you to come over onto your backs. I want you to give your knees a squeeze in towards the chest, make some circles in both directions, holding the knees together, rotating around in both directions. Just getting a bit of a release through that lumbar spine, that lower back, a bit of mobility. And we'll take those feet down onto the mat. So we're going to activate those abdominals now. Very small exercise. There's not a lot of movement in it, but it really fires up those abdominals. So the first thing you do on our back is make sure the feet and knees hip distance apart, feet are flat on the floor. We'll do a few pelvic tilts like we did at the beginning. Tuck the tailbone under, stick the tailbone out, and just do a few of those until you come to that neutral spine. You should find you've got a tiny bit of space under the lower back. You can't get your hands all the way through. From here, we engage the core, lift the pelvic floor, and pull that belly button down towards the spine. Take one leg into the tabletop position, the thigh is vertical, the shin parallel to the floor. Now, if you've got back problems, you will want to imprint that lower back. So you just tuck the tailbone under, flattening that lower back all the way down into the floor. We're all going to slide bottom ribs towards hips. So whether you're imprinted or working out of neutral, slide bottom ribs towards hips, getting that hip rib engagement, that connection there, and we bring the second leg to tabletop. So if you really struggle with back pain, I wouldn't do the next bit. I would just hold here, breathing deeply, and then take the legs back down one at a time, nice and controlled, and then come back up. If you don't really have any back pain and you're quite happy to progress, we're gonna take our hands onto our thighs, fingertips in line with the knees. So from here, we don't let the back change from neutral or imprint. We'll take a nice deep breath in. We're gonna breathe out, and as you do, pull your belly button in towards your spine, push your hands into your knees, and pull your knees up into your hands. Hold that for five seconds, and release. And then we repeat, nice deep breath in. We breathe out, we pull the belly button in towards the spine, push your hands into your knees, knees come into your hands, hold for five seconds, and release. If you do get tired doing this, you just take one leg down at a time, just take a, be a brief breather, bring the legs back up, maintaining neutral or imprint, whichever you went for, and we repeat. Nice deep breath in, we breathe out, we pull the belly button down towards the spine, push the hands to the knees, knees to the hands, five second hold, and release. We'll do this three more times. Take one leg down at a time, full body stretch. So we're gonna push the toes away as far as you can, arms overhead, push the fingertips away from you as far as you can, stretch out as long as possible, squeeze your glutes together, it should open up your hips, and just rotate your feet around in both directions. So you're just stretching out, letting your back and your ribs arch off the mat, move your feet, squeeze your glutes, just lengthen out along that mat. Once you've done that and you're feeling the release, hopefully you felt those abdominals kick in nice and strongly there, we'll come to the other side of the mat, for the side kick. So you just want those cushions at the front of the mat, your head will be at the front of the cushion. Arms out um, in front of us. We want those hips um, stacked on top of each other, feet, uh, knees bent, feet behind your bum in a nice straight line. Those arms are gonna come out in front of us, hands stacked on top of each other. We'll do the chest opener, then we'll do the side kick. So nice deep breath in, keeping that core strong, feel that support underneath, and then we'll breathe out as we take the arm up and over. Breathing in as we bring that back across. So those hips stay facing forwards, remember, we're rotating through the spine. Keep the neutral spine, make sure you've got neutral there. Follow that hand with your head, not just your eyes. So you are following your hand with your eyes and the head. So think about keeping your nose pointing at your hand, not just the eyes following. Breathing out as we open.
We'll do two more. Don't forget to keep your core switched on through this. You need to keep pulling your belly button in towards the spine and lifting that pelvic floor. Those hips stay forward facing, the legs are relaxed. You're twisting the spine, opening up the chest and stretching the neck as well. So the next one will be our hold, okay? So we're gonna come up and over, taking that arm back behind you. We're gonna relax into that. Four breaths. Each breath out, we just try and relax further into that stretch. Either try and get the arm flatter or closer to the floor, or try and stretch those fingertips a bit further away. Last one then, breathing in as we come back over, and then we'll remove those cushions out of the way. Stretch the arm out with the palm facing up, head relaxed down there, and we're gonna straighten that top leg, let it relax down in a nice straight line with the rest of the body. Hip stash back in neutral, not big arch, not tucking that tailbone under, nice and neutral. That core engages, belly button to spine, feel that lift around the waistline. That top leg comes up to a hovering line with the hip. So we'll point the toes to begin with. Keep the core strong, nice deep breath in. We breathe out as we lift. Flex the foot, breathe in as you lower, just back to a hover. Don't uh, touch the floor, try and keep the exercise going. So don't relax the leg down unless you need to. If you've got hip injuries, you might well need to. Just relax down as and, as and when, that's fine. But just try and keep going, strengthening into that glute medius. Breathing out as we lengthen and lift. Breathing in as we flex and lower. Make sure those hips are staying stacked. Remember, you can keep the fingertips in front for support, but just make sure those hips aren't rocking backwards and forwards. Typically, we'll see people like leaning forwards, putting weight through the hand or leaning back onto that bum cheek. Keep it stacked, keep the back neutral, chest open. Core staying strong, remember. We wanna remain, keep that engagement on the underside, that little lift of the waistline. One more of these. And you can relax that leg down briefly, rub and tap if you need to, just around that glute medius, that hip, particularly those muscles will be working quite hard there. Then we're gonna re-straighten the top leg and let it relax down. Just make sure you've got that core engagement, that engagement along the waistline and underneath. Hips are stacked, leg comes up in front. This time, we're gonna flex the foot forward. Now, if you don't want to do this, you do the other version we just did. Otherwise, we're breathing out as that leg comes forwards, point the toes, bring that leg back in. Flex the foot, bring that leg forwards as you breathe out. Feel the stretch down the back of the legs. Point the toe, bring that leg back. Keeping it, bringing it back in line with the body each time. Breathing out as that leg comes forwards. Point the toes, breathing in as that comes back in line with the body. Keep the core strong. Check those backs for me. Make sure they're not moving. There's no movement in your lower back. It's staying in neutral. Not arching, not rounding and flattening or anything like that. Particularly when the leg comes forward, we tend to tuck the tailbone under, and then when we bring the leg back, we tend to arch the back. Just make sure that's not happening. If it is, make sure your core's switched on, and you're in neutral, and stay. try and stay there. If you struggle, reduce the range of motion. We're just bringing that leg forward as we breathe out, feeling the stretch through the back of the leg. Gently point the toes, bring the leg back. Let's just do one more. Flexing that leg, bring it forward, breathing out. Point the toes. Breathing in as we come back. Now relax that leg down, rub and tap the hip. Bring yourselves over onto your backs. Give those knees a cuddle in towards the chest, rock from side to side. Just give those knees a bit of a squeeze. Just relax one leg away, flattening down, pulling that knee in towards the chest. A couple of breaths here. Take it out to one side, keeping your bum firmly on the mat. A couple of breaths here, still pulling that knee in towards the chest. Then take it across the body, swapping hands, pulling that knee in and over. You can let your bum cheek lift a little bit here. You should feel that stretch on the outside of the hip there, the outside of your bum. And bring that leg back straight now. Bring the other knee in, pull that knee in towards the chest. Couple of breaths. A 
Let that knee come out to one side, still pulling the knee in towards the chest. You should get a stretch on the inside of the thigh, groin area. Then we'll take that knee across the body, still pulling that knee in and over. Let that bum cheek lift a little bit, keep the shoulders on the mat. And then relax, bring that back to centre, let the leg lengthen out. From here, just bring yourselves up, core strong, bring yourselves up to sitting. And then bring yourselves up to kneeling, and then slowly up to standing. So we'll just give the body a flush. So just get yourself set up into your good posture, nice and tall. A couple of pelvic tilts either way, like we did at the beginning, just to find that neutral spine. Core engages, make yourself tall, nice deep breath in, bring your arms up. Breathing out, sweep those arms into a squat. Breathing as you come up. One more time. Breathing in, just relax your arms down. Good work, everybody. If you've got any questions or feedback, please feel free to get in touch with me. Hope the video is useful, get you moving in the mornings and feel a bit better um, before you start your day. Also, great little mobility session to use anytime uh, and before exercise as well. So I'm Russ from Pilates Guy, and thanks for watching the video.